Hello and welcome to Doc Clay's Chemistry Lessons. Today we're going to be looking at amount of substance and in particular we're going to be looking at the topic of water of crystallization. By the end of this lesson then you should be able to do the two following things. We should be able to calculate the water of crystallization for a substance given experimental data and secondly understand what is meant by the water of crystallization. We've come across the idea of water of crystallization before when we've looked at our examples before of copper sulfate and we've observed before with copper sulfate that if we heat it up we end up with a white substance this we describe as anhydrous copper sulfate and if we add water to it, we end up with the hydrated copper sulfate. And we show the extra waters by having the dot after the CuSO4. And the water of crystallization is simply water that is associated with the crystal. So if I look over here at my example here, we've got some copper ions in the middle oh, can't quite see the one on the right these are then surrounded by water molecules and then there is the sulfate ion in between the two metal ions and those waters are associated and trapped within the crystal and there are a given number of these water molecules per copper sulfate or per ionic substance. That is what we call the water of crystallization. We can drive the water off by heating very hard. We might be given then some experimental data in an exam and be asked to calculate the water of crystallization. We're going to do this in a very similar way as we do empirical and molecular formula by working out the mass of the substance, the mass of the water, and then we ratio the numbers of moles of each together. So the steps or the method for doing this is as follows. Step one, we find the mass of the anhydrous compound. So we might be given some numbers for the hydrated and also for the water and the difference between those two would give us the mass of the anhydrous compound that without water step two we find the mass of water we might be given that in the question or we might have to calculate it secondly oh sorry thirdly we're then going to calculate the moles of each so we're going to calculate the moles by doing the moles is equal to the mass divided by the MR, or the molecular mass. Of course, for water, that is always going to be 18. And then the other ionic substance is going to depend on what that is. And we'll see some examples in a minute. So we find out the moles of the water and the moles of the ionic substance. And the smallest number then, we divide by the smallest number to get the ratio of water to the ionic crystal. We'll have a look at that and an example in just a moment. A couple of seconds to note that down. So let's look at an example for calculating the water of crystallization. Here we've got a question that says 4.92 grams of hydrated magnesium sulfate crystals gave 2.40 grams of anhydrous magnesium sulfate on heating to constant mass. So heating to constant mass means no more water was able to come away. Work out the formula mass of the hydrated magnesium sulfate and so the value of N. So if we look at this question, we know for the MgSO4.NH2O we have 4.92 grams of the magnesium sulfate. It's heated and we have found out that we end up with 2.40 grams 
of the anhydrous magnesium sulfate. So that is without the water. That means the mass of water must be the difference between these two numbers. So it's 4.92. Take away 2.4. Giving us 2.52 grams of H2O. We then go through our steps. So the first thing to do is to work out the moles. And we do this by, in this case, dividing by the MR of each substance. 2.40 grams divided by 120 grams per mole. And here we have 2.52 divided by 18 and we end up here with our number of moles. We type that into our calculator and we find out we end up with 0 0.02 mole here and for the water we have 0 0.14 mole. Divide by the smallest, well the smallest between 0 0.02 and 0.14 is 0.02 and we end up with 1 and we end up with 7 0.14 divided by 0.02 is 7 so that means our n value up here is now equal to 7 and so our molecular formula is MgS O four dot seven H two O for the water crystallization because N is equal to the number seven. Okay, so at the end of that lesson then you should be able to do the following calculate the water of crystallization for a substance given experimental data and understand what is meant by the water of crystallization. That's all for this week. I'll see you soon.